Uh, in 2004, I came here uh, to the Commonwealth Club and performed an autopsy, a, a eulogy for environmentalism. Now, I don't know much about eulogies, but generally, eulogies by their nature are the last word on the subject. <laughs> but this conversation has continued. And I made a promise on that, on that day, that cold December day, as I recall it, to come back in the spring and share a set of solutions as opposed to my critique and as opposed to my problems. And it took me a few more springs than I thought, and the world has changed a fair bit since that time, but I'm back. And I said then that environmentalism was failing to respond at the scale of climate change and the basic categorical assumptions that underlie environmentalism have inhibited the environmental movement's ability to consider opportunities outside environmental boundaries. I said, we must not trade our fear of what will come next for our affection for environmentalism. And I remember when I said it, I, I was literally shaking. I, I, I was wearing a dark suit. I, was, uh, I, I felt like a bit of like an undertaker. And I, I knew full well that the reaction would be swift and harsh because... As it turns out, no one likes to be called dead, <laughs> particularly when they think they're alive. So <laughs> I remember that, that, that spring, long conversations with my wife, Lynn, as she tried to make me feel better about myself and about the, the accountability I felt for my own failures because I was sort of unable to sleep and I was watching cable news shows repeated over and over and, and something about Nancy Grace being seen over and over just <laughs> drives you a little mad. And little did I know at that time that the speech was being circulated in places I would never have experienced, namely among senior leaders at Walmart. And they were beginning, with Paul's help actually, to consider sustainability as a core part of their business. And it wasn't until 2006 when I started helping Walmart implement the sustainability program that, that the outside attacks really started flying. There was a, a widely circulated piece critiquing my decision to work with Walmart that was entitled The Death of Integrity. Another one just published this week has a more visceral title. I like this one. Adam Werbach Makes Me Puke. <laughs> <laughs> now, I probably shouldn't be surprised. This is the land of green. This is the town where people get eaten by tigers and zoos. So <laughs> nature has a strong, a strong standing here. There was a a blogger named Cliff Schechter who wrote a piece called Adam Werbach, Walmart's New Fraud Salesman. He said, what Werbach needs to realize is that Walmart is beyond improvement and yes, beyond redemption. Those who really are forward thinking need to stop working with this man, certainly stop paying him. And I would dare say, if you really believe in what you say you do, stop returning his phone calls. He has chosen to sell out. It doesn't mean we all have to join him in Wonderland. Now, First of all, I respect any person who uses dare say on a blog. <laughs> and second, tonight, I'd like you to join me in Wonderland. I ask you tonight to consider joining me in building a movement that goes beyond the political to the personal, that views the existential threat of global warming as a chance to change the way we treat ourselves and the planet, that aspires to have one billion active participants across the earth on the way to every person on the planet. Tonight, I'll contend that we need to invest more time in making a difference through our, our routine activities and through, yes, the things we buy every day. And to achieve this, I believe we need a broader platform than green.